on being successful in an online class. Hello, Internet section of Social Work 5537. I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Bob Brew. It's my dog in the background. <clears throat> and I will be teaching this course instead of Stacy Brayuka. I know I can hear the grumbling out there. Stacy's nice. Dr. Prue is mean. Stacy has that online thing all down, and Dr. Prue still communicates using carrier pigeons. <clears throat> well, these rumors are greatly exaggerated. So, anyway. <sighs> Here's a picture of me at the start of last year's quantitative research course. And here is what I look like after that. So, actually, that's just me at Halloween. So, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm playing catch up this year with the online class uh, since I hadn't expected to um, um, take it. So, um, so while I had not expected to be teaching online, I have taught it in the past. So, hopefully, I'll be able to. Uh, pull it off this semester without too much more than normal amount of trouble. And speaking of trouble and normality, there is always trouble related to online teaching. Technology can be a wonderful thing, but it can also be a tremendous pain in the in the in the brain. <clears throat> But I have successfully taught dozens of online sections in the past, and no one, all caps, no one, has ever had to be failed. So I am confident that each one of you, every one of you, can be successful. Knowing that your online education will probably require as much or more of you than a traditional classroom, I know it does for me, they're more labor intensive than in traditional courses, so we've got our work cut out for us this semester, despite the conveniences. So the number one thing you can do to be a successful learner in an online environment is be an active learner. So that's, it means staying engaged. Stay engaged with the course. It means keep up with all assigned readings and activities. Pretty straightforward. What causes people in online education really is often the same thing that plagues students in traditional classrooms. Number one, in my estimation, is the failure to keep up. The research courses at UMKC School of Social Work are packed full of things to learn and to do. Plus, they build upon themselves. I don't expect a lot of you in this course could produce a meaningful linear regression and make sense of it at this point in your career, but I do think all of you will be able to do so in May. And linear regression is just, this is just one example. <clears throat> but it requires owning the concept of statistical centrality, correlation, plus you know, a bit of things like sampling and probability theory, but it's not all that much. So, yeah. And most of you already possess the rudiments of understanding of these things. The more important, <clears throat> what you need to understand is their connection to one another and the various techniques of statistical analysis. So you can see it does get complicated. It's simple, but it's complicated and it will build together. So in the past, um, Social Work 557 classes have not done as well as the face-to-face -face classes. And um, by signing up for an online class, you've already set a bit of a challenge for yourself. And, uh, and, and that's true that, that, that you know, uh, statistically in my past online research courses, when compared to the same year's traditional classes on the, the online class had the lowest overall scores and made the least amount of improvement from pre-test to post-test. That said, some individuals in the online course have been extremely successful. 
often excelling when they were concerned if they could even pass at the beginning of the course when they first enrolled. So um, those were the slow ones, the steady ones. We all remember the story of the tortoise and the, the hare, or maybe we don't. Uh, <clears throat> The hare runs a bit and then takes a nap, runs a bit, takes a nap, whereas the tortoise just plugs along. So think of, think of being a little bit of, of a tortoise today. So This little picture here, by the way, was from a Kansas City guy named Walt Disney, so FYI. So uh, watch out for those last minute attempts. They can really cause you, cause you grief when it comes to research. It's hard to play catch up. Uh, with research. The slow, the steady, that's what makes the day. And failure to keep up is something that I can monitor in the classroom much more easily. You know, I can notice the pained expressions on people's faces or blank looks when I'm lecturing on things such as the concepts of central tendency or how analysis of variance is really just another kind of linear regression. Uh-oh. I can see you all in my mind's eye right now, just kind of starting to fade away. Well, my mind's eye is not my real eye. <clears throat> I cannot tell which of you are having dumbstruck expressions and need attention and who don't. So, keeping engaged. What does all of that, what does keeping engaged really mean? Well, one thing you can do to keep engaged is take advantage of office hours. And well, I will spend each Thursday night from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., maybe maybe a little later than that, in office hours for the internet class, face-to-face -face office hour. I have an expectation with that that the students will check in during office hours, meaning each week, check in. Um, I will be physically located in room 117 in Cherry Hall for consultation regarding this class. By checking in, I mean coming by Cherry Hall. And if you, you know, if you cannot come by Cherry Hall at that time, I'm also going to be available via the Wimba online classroom during that same time. And provided my laptop is working via Skype. <clears throat> And if you can get Blackboard IM figured out, there's always that option as well. Now, I know some of you, you used uh, Google Hangout last year in Stacy's class. I'm willing to try that, but I really am unfamiliar with the technology, whereas I am familiar with the Wimba Online Classroom. And with the Wimba Online Classroom, I can actually go see your computer desktop if you're having trouble figuring out how to get Excel to work right, or if you are if you have a problem with, with a, an R formula that um, you don't see what the problem is. So uh, those kind of things sometimes um, I can help with. But really coming into face-to-face -face office hours I think will be your best bet. You know, bring your laptop, use one of the computers there at the office, particularly if you have a Mac, because it's harder to do some of the, um, some of the uh, Excel assignments when you have a Macintosh. Another good mechanism for keeping engaged is um, the discussion boards, blogs, and, and the wiki features of Blackboard. Um, each week, and I mean each week, except for each one, the first one, one or more of you will be asked and you'll be expected to lead the discussion on the topic of the week, <clears throat> either based on the readings from Salkind's text or you can bring in additional information or resources on the topic. Um, um, if you don't want to use discussion boards, blogs, or wikis, you may also produce an up to 10 minute integrity screencast, screencast to get your discussion going. So, <clears throat> um, in addition to learning statistics and quantitative research, I would like to use the experience of these weekly encounters to reinforce a vital social work virtue. It's actually one of our, one of our ethical values. Um, that is our responsibility, responsibility to both our profession and to our colleagues. Um, 
So targeting these online discussions towards helping one another to really get and understand these concepts uh, does a great service. Also, when you yourself don't understand um, what's going on, um, you can use that to start the discussion. So invite your more experienced um, um, colleagues to, um, uh, to help you out. And so these two things, I think, are some of the greatest builders of, of knowledge on a particular subject. Um, the ability to, to teach what you need to know and the ability to, to uh, know what you don't know and ask, questions, and ask for help and get it. So, and they all build the skill of, of uh, critical reflective thinking. So I think it's, it's, just, it's a great thing for social workers to be able to do. <clears throat> And finally, the weekly quizzes. Yeah, they're they're um, actually the the quiz that goes with chapters one through seventeen of Salkind. They're not just for punishment, you know. Um, they do serve the function of keeping folks on track. You can retake the quizzes as often as you like. So, you know, therefore, all all the quizzes are going to be open until sometime in April. So you don't have to worry about. Uh, you know, if you if you if you blow the first attempt, um, um, so if you you know come to understand a concept later on in the semester, which helps you to understand an earlier concept, you can then go back and take the quiz over and hopefully get a better score. Be my guess, do that. However, this is in all caps. However, the quizzes are meant to be taken in the same week as the chapter that it is associated with is assigned for reading. So, um, and I'll be watching that. You know, if you fall behind on, on um, your taking of quiz, I'm going to have a little discussion with you. And, um, now, if you put off taking these quizzes uh, during the weeks of the readings, you'll find that you won't, won't do so well. Uh, and I've noticed that because uh, I've watched this. The students who read take the quiz, get a, they just do much better. So my advice is read the chapter, take the quiz. Um, then if you need to retake it later, do so. But, you know, make sure you do that first attempt that, that week that your reading is due. And, and don't obsess on it. You know, if you, if you don't get, get them all right the first time, you know, you don't sit, sit there and need to retake the test and retake the test and retake the test until you get them all right. It's... Um, uh, uh, you got to be judicious in your, in your use of time, but that's all up to you. Another way to keep engaged and keep on track, but to do so outside of office hours, um, is through our normal communication system. Uh, I take text, text messages. I, I will my. Um, my cell phone is posted, I think, on the syllabus. If not, it'll be posted on Blackboard. Um, and email. And, and finally, my phone. You can give me a call at work anytime. Um, <clears throat> but when you email me, it's important that you email me through the email function in our uh, Blackboard system. So th that's from our class. So. There's the email link right there at the bottom, uh, and that's where it's going to stay the rest of the semester. So you'll know where it is. Um, the way my Outlook program is set up, it will recognize when an email comes out of this particular class. So it'll funnel it right to a priority box in my inbox, and I'll be able to um, get right at that. Although it is important to note, that I tend to check my emails the first thing in the morning. So it might take a full 24 hours. Uh, say, for example, if you email me uh, in mid-morning uh, before I get back with you on an email. And I also teach on two mornings of the week. So you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I won't be checking my email until sometime in the afternoon. Sometimes on, on, on Wednesdays we have faculty meetings, and I'm also not able uh, to, to get to them on that. That's just one day a week. Also, the, the social sciences 
Institutional Review Board meets um, on Friday mornings once a week. So I may not get that particular one. So um, email, bear with me. So uh, you can call me, 816-235-5861. Uh, is my uh, office number, and that's posted in the, on the syllabus, and it'll be posted on Blackboard. Uh, <clears throat> but only during reasonable hours would I prefer it if you text me. You can call my office anytime, at night or day, midnight. Call me at midnight, I don't care. I won't answer it. Um, but if you're going to call on my cell phone or Text me on my cell phone. I'd rather you not call my cell phone. Just text me on my cell phone. Um, um, then uh, do that during reasonable hours. Uh, you know, Monday to Friday till 8 p.m. is, is a reasonable hour. Um, uh, Saturday mornings sometimes will work. I do have another project that has come up during Saturdays, so I might not be able to be as available as I would like to be. I had originally planned on having my office hours on Saturday, so. So um, we might have to play around with those of you who, who came out of the Saturday class kind of unwillingly uh, if you need some, some support. Uh, uh, so you, know, you can always leave a voice message on my office phone. Um, um, the university has a system where they just forward those voice messages to my email, and so I, I can get a hold of them uh, right away. So. Um, well, whenever I check my email, which is in the morning. So that's on being successful here in your online class. So best of luck to you. And uh, I look forward to um, another semester of statistics and quantitative research for social workers. <laughs>